What we're going to be going over here is an example. We're going to be using the corridor approach and we're going to be calculating a minimum gain or loss amortization here on a pension liability. And this is where we're going to be smoothing any unexpected gain or losses on this pension liability. So in general terms, this is what we're talking about here in, for this corridor approach for any gain or loss computation. So we start with our current year actual return and when we subtract our current year expected return and that's going to give us our current year unexpected gain or loss. And so that's part A of our equation here. Then we would take our beginning of the year accumulated other comprehensive income gain or loss here and we'd subtract what we have to calculate. And we're going to look at this quarter number here or limit that we're going to have to calculate. And then we take that quantity here beginning of the year accumulated other comprehensive income gain or loss subtract our quarter amount here and then we divide it by the average remaining service life here on our pension plan here but for the employees. And that's going to equal the current year amortized gain or loss. So what we would do is we take our current year unexpected gain or loss here, whatever it is here, and we add it, subtract it or add it to our current year amortized gain or loss. That's going to equal our current year gain or loss. Okay, so let's just go look at a problem here to look at what how we calculate it here. So we're going to be looking at four years here, and we're going to have our we're showing here a projected benefit obligation and then our plan assets on this pension plan here. And then we're going to have to calculate our quarter amount here. And we'll look at that here. Then we're going to be giving uh, be given the end of the year net gain or loss here on the pension plan. And then we're going to have to calculate our beginning accumulated other comprehensive income any gain or loss on that. And then from that we can calculate the minimum amortization here of these gain or loss. Okay, so let's start with calculating the quarter amount here. So this is how you do it here. You take, uh, you look at your projected benefit obligation here versus your plan assets. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the 10% of the lar larger amount between your projected benefit obligation or your plan assets. So looking at year X1 here, projected benefit obligation. I have everything in thousands of dollars here. This 4,000 here, that really represents 4 million here. But let's just, in terms here, let's just say it's 4,000. Compare it to our plan assets of 3,800. You can see the projected benefit obligation here is bigger here. So you're gonna take 10% of the larger one here. And I've got it marked in red which one is larger here. So our projected benefit obligation or our liability here on this pension plan, we take 10% of that, that's going to be our quarter amount here for the first year, X1 here, 400000 So that's really a loss here since that's a liability that calculating amount here is a loss. Then looking at our next year here, year X2, well, uh, PB, uh, PBO here, the pension, uh, projected benefit obligation, 4800 is less than our plan assets of 5000 here. So we're going to use the plan assets here as our quarter amount. So 10% of the larger amount here, our plan assets, 5000 here, is going to give us 500, uh, 500 here. And that's uh, an asset amount here. So that that's an asset here. That's not showing. I'm showing the uh, liabilities as negative numbers here with the bars around them. So that's an asset. So that's an asset amount here. Then looking at year X3 here, well, 5,900 for the PBO versus our plan assets, 5,200. PBO here is greater. 10% uh, of the 5,900, that's going to give us 590. 590 here is our the larger amount as our uh, 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 liability amount here and then looking at our last year year x4 well our pension benefit obligation is 7200 here is greater than the plan assets of 6000 so take 10% of the 7200 that's giving us giving us 720 here again as a liability or a negative amount okay so now this is what we have to do. We have to go and we have to calculate the beginning of the year accumulated other comprehensive income, any gain or loss here. And then from that, we'll calculate our minimum amortization gain or loss. Okay, so let's just say starting with our year X1 here. Well, let's just say we started out with a zero balance here in a beginning accumulated other comprehensive income. No gain or loss, just a zero balance. Based on that fact here, we have a minimum amortization here of any gain or loss is zero here since we're starting out with a zero amount. Now you see here we're given this is amount here this 560,000 here or 560 that's at the end of the year here x1 that's not at the beginning that's at the end of the year here and we our calculated quarter amount that was again 
showing here at 400,000 here based on our end of the year amounts. Okay, so now let's go here. We got a zero here for A amount here. It was looking at it down here. We got, I got showing the calculations down here. A, that's as of the beginning of the year, a zero balance here in your accumulated other comprehensive income, any gain or loss. Okay, so now let's move down here. What we have to do is look at year X2 here. And we're gonna, whip, what happens here is the be, at the end of the year X1 here becomes the beginning of the year X2 here. Uh, and that was a loss here. A net loss here by the uh, on a pension plan of five hundred sixty thousand. So that begins our beginning of the year ac accumulated other comprehensive income here for year X two. So there's our five hundred sixty thousand dollars. Now the next thing we have to calculate is the minimum amortization here for year X two here, and we're going to come up with six thousand dollars. So let's go down and let's look at our calculations. Okay. So what we do here for B here, the 6,000, we calculate it in this fashion. We take the beginning of the year, other comprehensive income, any gain or loss. In this case, that was the 560,000. That was our carryover here from year X1 becomes the beginning amount here for year X2, the 560,000. And then we would subtract out our calculated uh, corridor amount here of 500,000 or 500. Let's just say, 500 here rather than go into our thousand. So say a 500 amount here. Okay, so we subtract that here. It's a positive amount. We would subtract that out here from our 560 or 560,000 here. Divide it by the remaining service life per employee. And we'll say for year X2 here, it's 10 years here. So what we were going to come up with here is 6,000. That's simply our equation here that we've shown. The beginning of the year, other accumulated other comprehensive any gain or loss in this case it was a loss here 560,000 subtract out our corridor amount it was a positive amount here that asset was we had a more assets here plan assets that was at 10 percent here of our plan assets here of 5,000 and that difference here you divide it by the average remaining service life per employee of 10 years that give us our six thousand dollars here okay so we've got that for year X2. Now let's move down here to year X3. Next thing we have to again is determine what the beginning of the year accumulated other comprehensive income, any gain or loss. And that's really, let's look at how we get that. And that's going to be 734, 734,000 here. That's that C amount. So let's go down here and look at that. Well, that becomes the beginning balance here, 560,000 from the beginning of the year here. Then we have to subtract out what we already recognized as our minimum amortization loss here that we calculated in year X2 of 6,000. Then we would add the law, then <clears throat> end of the year net the loss in this case of 180,000. So adding our or taking our quantity to C here, 734, that's the 560,000 loss here as of the be uh, beginning of the uh, beginning of the year here that we would have. Then we subtract out our minimum uh, uh, previous minimum uh, loss here of 6,000 and then we have to add in this loss here for the year here, 180,000. Say 180,000 of year X2 becomes the, uh, is included here in year X3 here. So that, that was the end of the year here for year X2 becomes the be beginning of the year X3. So that's included in year X3, 734. Now, we take to calculate, in this case, we're gonna have a minimum loss again here of 12 or 12,000 here. And that's really taking our 734 here, beginning accumulated other comprehensive income here, subtract out our quarter amount. In this case, it's a negative amount here or a liability of 590, 590 590,000 if you want to look at it there. The difference divided by, in this case, our average remaining service life is now 12 years. So that's going to give us a minimum amortized loss here of $12,000 looking at our equation here. Okay, so we've taken care of that. We've calculated C here and also D here, a minimum amortization loss in this case here for year X3. Now just looking at our last year here, year X4, and that we're going to come up with 744,000 here for a beginning of the year accumulated other comprehensive income. So what we would do is we take the 734,000 here from year X3 
And then we have to subtract out our minimum, in this case, amortization loss here of 12,000. Okay, 12,000 is what we had in year X3. Then we add in uh, the end of the year net loss of 22,000, in this case from year X3 here, that 22,000, that, that becomes a factor. So we take the 734, the beginning of the year here in year X3, again, going through that here, subtracting out the minimum amortization loss that we had year, near, year X3 of 12,000, and then we would add in that beginning of the end of the year and loss here from year X3 of 22 thousand or 22 here and that gives us our 744 thousand here uh, amount that beginning of the year accumulated other comprehensive loss in this case here and that's for year x4 okay so now to calculate our minimum 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 amortization in this case it's going to be a loss here of 2000 or two here simply take the beginning accumulated other comprehensive income here 700 44 and subtract from it the quarter amount it was that 720 here for year x4 uh, four here that we had 720 the negative amount of the liability here so the difference there divided by again our remaining service life here per employee is 12 years and that's going to give us 2000 here in our minimum amortization loss in this case here. So you see what's going on here with this simple problem. We can we can go through everything uh, determine it, but you can see what's going on uh, just looking at uh, uh, the end of the year net gain or loss here becomes the beginning of the year here accumulated other comprehensive income gain or loss and this is kept in a separate account here. And then based on that here you have to take and you have to you take whatever you determine here in your beginning at a beginning of the year accumulate other other comprehensive income gain or loss or accumulated other comprehensive gain or loss you take the beginning of the year here and you would subtract out whatever you're calculated for your quarter amount here and then you divide it by the average remaining service life so that's how we come up with our minimum amortized gain or loss here and then the other thing that you have to look at here is calculating this quarter amount here and that's really making again taking 10 percent of the larger amount here between your projected benefit obligation or your plan asset. So you make your comparison. You have to see which is larger here. And looking at, let's say, again, year X2 here, we have projected benefit here. Obligation was only was 4,800 versus our plan assets, 5,000. So we would take 10% of the larger amount. 5,000 here gives us our calculated quarter amount here of 500. Okay, so that's for year X2. But uh, what we did here for the beginning of the year, other beginning of the year uh, accumulated other comprehensive income in and gain or loss that really was the end of the previous years here net gain or loss here on the pension plan and then to determine what uh, you're sitting here for your amortization minimum amortization amount here uh, then looking at B here all you're doing is you're taking your beginning of the year accumulated other comprehensive income any gain or loss here and you have to subtract showing it here you have to subtract out your quarter amount depending if it's a uh, liability or an asset here in this case the 500 here was an asset amount so we subtracted that here from our 560 or it really didn't matter here you can take whatever the difference is between your assets and liabilities here you just subtract those amounts out and then you divide it by the average remaining service life to give you the minimum amortization gain or loss but the minimum amortization gain or loss that you have to look at in terms of if you have a greater amount here uh, of liability versus an asset. I just didn't want to make the difference here is you take your you're just taking your beginning of the year uh, accumulated other comprehensive income if it's a gain or loss subtract your quarter amount and what you want to do here in this case you just want to make sure that when you're determining whether or not you've got an amortization gain or loss here what you're just make the comparison when you do your subtraction here make sure you're looking at whether your liability here is greater than your asset amount or your negative amount here is greater than your asset amount here or your amount here so therefore when you divide in your remaining service life that's going to give you 
in this case, uh, negative or a minimum amortization loss here. Now, if the other was true here, if the 560,000 here uh, of your projected uh, uh, amount here or your asset here was greater than your liability, then you'd have a minimum amortized gain here. That's all I'm saying. So just make your comparison here. You do your subtraction, make your comparison whether you got a larger asset versus a liability, divide it by the average service life, that's going to give your, your minimum amortization gain or loss. Okay, so that's a general equation that we looked at here. You just take the beginning of the year, uh, accumulated other comprehensive in, uh, gain or loss here, S subtract your quarter amount that you calculated, divide it by your average remaining service life here to determine what your minimum amortization gain or loss would be. And then the, remember how you've gone here to determine what your beginning amount here would in your other accumulated other comprehensive income. It just takes your beginning of the year here, uh, accumulated other comprehensive income, subtract any minimum gain, amortized gain or loss from it here, and then you would add back whatever you have here for your given end of the year, given uh, amount here for your net, uh, net gain or loss from the previous year to determine what your current year here with beginning accumulated other comprehensive income gain or loss. Okay, so that'll summarize our subject.